Here's the problem with magnesium supplementation when it comes to sleep. The first thing to note is that most forms of magnesium don't cross the blood-brain barrier, and sleep is produced by your brain. So how can something that doesn't get into your brain affect brain process? All you're doing is creating probably expensive urine. But it doesn't stop there. There's so much new evidence that we have, including this myth of eight hours. My fear about giving melatonin to kids, why you keep them waking up in the middle of the night, and the invention of the first new class of sleeping medication that I actually favor. And most people are not aware of it. Okay, let me write this down. To society, we have struggles with sleep at night due to many reasons, but no one teaches us this stuff. And it's things like, say you go to bed at 11 one night, 1 a.m. the next night, then 10.30 p.m. the next night. And it's remarkable how many people do this. But studies have shown that you are statistically 49% more likely to prematurely die versus those people who were most regular in terms of going to bed and waking up at the same time. And worse, they had a 57% cardiometabolic disease risk increase. What the? But science really teaches us that there are four pillars of good sleep. And then there's this incredible new study looking at sleep banking. And this is remarkable for people who are facing a sprint at work or a medical doctor about to go on call for the next 40 hours, new parents, and we can go through all of that. But if you were to push me to say the three most impactful things that you can start doing tonight to start sleeping better, it would be 